You're watching the Bethel College Football Show. I say, brother, you stay home! Brother, 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 brother! football show for a final time during the 2022 season. I'm Dan Page, alongside head football coach of the Threshers, A.B. Stokes. Bethel College finishes their season 9-1, and one. only one blemish on the season, a 28-14 loss at Avila, and finished number 14 in the country in the coaches' polls. And we, I think a lot of people know how the season ended, but coach, um, a 9-1 and one season in your first year, as a college head coach, I think anybody would take that. You know, yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, as far as wins and versus versus losses, yeah, you'd be, I'd be crazy to sit here and 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 act like I'm gloom about that. Uh, and but more so happy uh, for for the guys and the work that they put in uh, in the in the off season of last year uh, through through transition and unknown and and change and. Uh, I'm super. I'm super happy for them to be able to be a, a you know, a, for a third time a co-conference champion, uh, for a third time win nine games. Uh, I'm so upset that the that uh, the Atlantis game was was non-countable because that we would have had the record for wins um, in in Bethel College history with ten. Mm -hmm. We were tied. That was countable. Uh, tied. I thought with nine, the 1984 nine. team, they, oh, they won, won ten. 10. Yeah. Oh, cool. Well, I yeah. didn't know that. That's good to know. That's yeah. good to know. I get reminded by some folks. Okay. So uh, they won ten in 1984. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Well, yeah. So we tied it with ten. Uh, again, just happy for the guys, uh, but definitely mm, just know that it's mm -hmm. just a, you know we could have we if given the opportunity we could have squeezed a little bit more out of, out of this year you sure know? so yeah absolutely I, I think you know we saw a lot of growth from so many guys that who might have considered their growth period being over in college football because of how acclimated they got to it but they were challenged mm -hmm. in ways that they had never been challenged before a lot of them and it was really truly remarkable to see not just players but also um, coaches and everyone involved with the program there's so many things that went into it and uh, a lot of people just being together for the first time as a group mm -hmm. is um, I mean, that's the challenge you see at the beginning of every season with camp and going forward, you're going through all that journey together. Yes. And, you know, like we talked about in our first show, approaching December here, we can look back at things. And, um, yeah, I, I can understand a lot that there's a lot of dissatisfaction um, from those close to the program and those uh, families that are close to the program as well. And... Uh, I, I'm completely there with them. Uh, <laughs> I, I've, I've been public about it at the same time. And, um, you know, I've kind of, we've all kind of gone through those emotions yeah. and processed uh, how things were. And when, when I mentioned, when I mentioned this specifically for those that may not be as abreast of the situation, obviously the Threshers did not make the playoffs mm -hmm. in the round of 16. And the, the team that they beat number 10 Southwestern did make it in. And uh, that has created a lot of conversation, um, but we'll leave it at, it's a lot of that on social media where it belongs. Um, it's kind of to the point to where you accept kind of what has happened and you learn from it, you grow from it. And then next time uh, you leave no doubt. Yeah, yeah you're hitting no, hitting no things. Don't be giving away things, you know what I mean? No, but uh, I just want to, you know, uh, let you know, Dan, that obviously I, I'm very grateful uh, for uh, 
the, the season that these young men have had. Um, I can't sit here and not be when, you know, it could, it could have been uh, completely different uh, in terms of, of wins and losses. Uh, but uh, I've got feelings too, Dan. You know what I mean? Sure. Like I, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a human. Uh, yeah. You know, I know uh, it, it's funny. I, I was very upset, and I think there was uh, uh, someone in the halls who had told another, another coach on this hall, like, I've never seen Coach Stokes mad. Like, well, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I get, I get mad. I get upset. You sure. know, I, I get disappointed. You know, I, I, I was sad, and there was a lot of different emotions uh, that that ran through, you know, my body from Sunday evening, you know, to even till today, right? But um, as I as I sit here, you know, uh, I've always I've always learned that when when tough things come come towards you or you know life throws something hard at you, you you've got two options, right? You can sit and wallow in it and complain, um, or you can you can get back up, you know, dust yourself off, and then uh, continue to do the things that got you at least in that consideration, but do them at a at a higher level and a better level. So. Uh, I can I can sit here today and say, uh, am I over it? No, I'm not. Uh, it doesn't happen that easily, because uh, I'm telling you, if you get to talking about it, I I'm gonna get I'm jumping right back into that rabbit hole, man. Sure. If you get to talking exactly, about it. Exactly. Yeah. But, but uh, I, are we gonna be all right? Yes, we are. You know, we it, it it's it, we we'll be okay. Uh, I'm I'm excited uh, about you know, things that, that, that are going to come and j with just being like the, the banquet for these seniors and, and some other things. Uh, we got a couple of guys who who made it into um, the, the All-Star game in, in North Carolina. Um, so I'm excited for, for uh, things like that that are coming up and excited to uh, for all these guys to go home and spend time with, with their family over break and, uh, you know, and come back refreshed and, and, and ready to go. And that's in December, that game. Are you able to announce that yet or who the representatives will be? Well, I'm going to hold it because I'm not too sure. Okay. Um, I, I I don't even know if I can tell you this. Three three of our coaches have been selected to coach in it. So, okay. Uh, we, we don't we – don't, we're not for sure if, if uh, they're going to make the trip or, or not. Um, but we'll, I think all that information comes out like November 25th, so. Okay, absolutely. Well, if you're watching this show, we hope you're having a happy Thanksgiving and preparing for a great holiday season at the same time. Um, but tracing back to um, this season for Thresher football, nine and one, and you mentioned it coached three straight seasons of nine win seasons for the senior class that is moving on and then eight and three, many of their freshman year or some of their second years for the fifth year guys. Mm -hmm. um, but most successful campaign in Thresher football history. Um, and you can't talk enough about that. And then, what was it, 22 different players recognized by the conference? Uh, it, it was actually 20 players, but 22 positions okay. selected. Because yes. I think uh, Braden and Trey doubled up, and that's mm -hmm. how we got to 22. So, But yeah, 22 selections mm -hmm. uh, is what we had, but 20 players, which is, I mean, that's still, <laughs> uh, it's a, you know, it's secondary to not getting in, I guess. You know, sure. I mean? to getting in, to, yeah. to the to the playoffs. So I, I was very happy for uh, all those guys who who, who made all conference uh, honors, and then we, you know, we've got four guys put up for all American honors. So we'll know more about that soon as well. So excellent. Yeah, I mean, that's that's kind of the expectation at this rate. Mm -hmm. uh, you came into this season with um, four All Americans returning mm -hmm. to this team. Um, and that was a, a great remarkable feat, sometimes even undermined mm -hmm. um, by those on the outside. Um, but, you know, it, it's, it'd be really cool to see, you know, even if it's somebody else trading a spot for that All-American spot, four for four, uh, in and four out kind of a thing, that would be really interesting to see. Mm -hmm. um, um, I, I think you can guess who some of those people are if you're watching. Mm -hmm. um, after a spectacular season um, for several guys. But the Threshers 
Again, nine and one, went his highest ninth in the country in the season. And that was after the victory over Southwestern College. Um, it was a great, great thing to get up that high. And, uh, you know, you kind of wish you could say, you, you could stay up there in that conversation. Um, but nonetheless, it was another stepping stone, I believe, for the program. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I think definitely no one can ignore, despite what kind of rhetoric's out there, no one can ignore what's happened the last few seasons here. Mm -hmm. No one can ignore, I mean, there's been a lot of teams that have had successful runs in this conference in the KCAC, Kansas Wesleyan, uh, Southwestern, Avila, you know, sharing a conference championship two of the last three years. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, there's so many good teams that, and they're going to continue to get better. Um, Bethany just hired a new coach mm -hmm. as well. And, you know, year in and year out, you know, there's going to be growth in this conference uh, going forward with adding Evangel is going to be even better. Mm -hmm. And we've talked about that all year long. However, you know, it, this, this is not just one of those stretches that at least you believe from based on my conversations with you, this is not a stretch that's going to end now for oh, this no. program no 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 and i mean um i think any coach uh, you know any coach anywhere especially those who uh, are experiencing some success you know they will probably tell you all the same thing um but um what's a little different here at, at bethel you know uh in, in recent years um and I, well i'll just speak for 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 my year for my year uh is that we we stop we don't look at success as a destination right it's a byproduct we look at success mm -hmm. as a byproduct so um i told you guys when i when i came here man like <laughs> it, it's funny like i've seen the blueprint you mm -hmm. know that there, there is value in that like I, i've sure. seen the blueprint of turning a program around right and then i went to a whole different place you know diff different level mm -hmm. you know high school but uh, legit high school, I'm talking about ballers, right? Uh, and I saw a completely different blueprint of sustaining success, mm -hmm. sustainable success. And uh, just kind of merging them, merging them together. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, I know, I know the good things that got us here and I know the good things that have kept a program there. And so when you consistently, you know, cash in the things that, that typically cash out success, you're gonna be successful. That's, right. that's what's gonna happen. Like now, is every year gonna be, you know, undefeated or conference champ, co-conference champ, whatever that may be. Uh, we'd love it to be, but we can't control that. There's gonna be some years where some teams may get us, right? Mm -hmm. But the goal is that we're staying close enough to be in striking distance at any moment right and when you look at it like that and the kids truly buy into it you will not drop you won't you won't drop out you know you won't have a, a huge drop off and um i can say that because i know every program in the country knows that that's not a secret but the difference between those who who are who are doing it you know who are successful and those who, who aren't is the, the ones who are sustaining that success they're doing those things they're doing mm -hmm. the little things every day and and and, and i'm and we're, and we're not going to compromise you know if, if if we if we fail trying to do it the right way trying to do it our best and so be it we fail not gonna not gonna compromise and then you know we'll know um that is it's time for some kind of shift or change i don't mean to get too far down the, down the line but I'm just I'm just letting you know that that's all take that that's all tied into sustaining success. Yeah, I mean, I know that it's maybe seemed to some people that, you know, they just another season Threshers co-conference champions, you know, there's so, so much work that's gone into that um, just, um, you know, just within the last calendar year just to get it sustained at that point. Um, you know, and trending upward. And when I, I mean that trending upward, because there's no doubt, and you, we both know this, that you guys haven't even hit your peak. No. Not no. not even. And we were, we were hoping to do that this week. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, well, th what I'm getting to with that is, yeah. there's some programs out there where, mm -hmm. you know, you once you get to a certain point, you've proved what you wanted to prove. Mm -hmm. 
And but the thing is, you guys, I think can continue can look up and get better. Mm-hmm. Like there's others out there that are, are that, you know, they're still, um, you know, everybody has that kind of dog fight mm-hmm. to you got to bring that work ethic anyway. Yes. But I mean, yeah, you guys have something sustainable built on rock, if you will. Built on rock, man. And rock. going forward, I think there's so many exciting possibilities at the same time. So, Absolutely. um, you know, just, this is just getting your feet wet. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. I, I, I feel like I, I just dove in head first though, but definitely, <laughs> definitely get my feet wet. Uh, Man, what a season, right? I mean, so proud of these guys. I'm just, I, I can't say that enough. I'm definitely uh, looking forward to sustaining it. But man, th- these guys, man, uh, great. I said greatness lives in the past. Man, these, these guys, they were absolutely great. They were great. They did everything that you asked of them. Everything. And, and, and more. Yes. And even then, you know, even the smallest, you know, the smallest thing that went wrong, like the, the, that just shows you the margin for error in some some levels uh, the game of football is, is so hard to be successful in yes. as it is. And so to win victories is definitely something you could be grateful for, um, you know, just to experience not just what goes on during the game, the success, but the camaraderie, the brotherhood mm-hmm. that has existed here and we fully believe that will continue to exist here. Oh yeah, no, no, and it gets stronger. It, yes, it has to. There's no choice. Yes, so. and now other, you know, coming up. I mean, I'm not. I'm saving this for eight months from now. But but you know, it's kind of like you know, it's kind of the next guy has to step up into the conversation, mm-hmm. and you know, be that guy that they've seen, yeah. um, the last few years that has made an All Conference player, or been an All American. Mm-hmm type and I think you definitely have players that are capable of that and possibly even new players coming to the program that will even make an impact from day one yeah that's true and and when it comes to like new players coming in though you know the 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 thing that uh we're big on here and I talked about it is developing right so uh, as I sat in the meeting with the guys who were coming back yesterday after we you know we we applauded our seniors out and you know then it was uh, hey, this is this is where we go from here with this group. Uh, I let all of them know, and, and it's no secret that uh, next year's success uh, is not gonna. It can't be on the backs of the guys who come in in August. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. it's next year's success is is solely gonna depend on the work that these guys who are here right now today, these guys who have been here, the work that they put in this off season, in this summer, like. It's, it's going to depend on that. And that's why, you know, we go into it and we hit it hard, you know, come January. Uh, we, you know, we, we give them a little bit. We back off a little bit uh, going into Christmas break. Uh, but we do some things. But we hit it hard. We hit it hard in January. And it's going to come off, uh, off the backs of these guys because these guys are the ones who they saw it already. Right? Mm-hmm. They saw it. So if you if, if you depend on too many new guys coming in your program, this is the issue that you face when you find when you you're, you're back against the wall or you're you know, you you're having an adverse moment. Those guys haven't seen how we handle it, how we go through it, how right. we keep fighting. But the guys who are here, they've seen it. And that's why it's so important you develop those guys. So though that is the bulk, the majority of the people that you depend on come next year. They've seen it. They've seen how we respond when we're down. They've mm-hmm. seen how we respond after a loss. You know, they've seen how we respond when we win. They know we don't get ahead of ourselves. We don't get big headed. We don't, you know what I mean? Uh, we continue to stay humble. They've seen those things. And so those are going to be the ones who drive the, they're going to be the ones who, for lack of a better term, they steer the ship, right? Even though we burnt that thing, right? Mm-hmm. They're going to sh- steer the ship. So um, that's why it's, it's, I, I, I like to talk about incoming guys, but those aren't the guys we. You, you don't sustain success by re re up in every year. And I know some teams in the conference have done that, uh, but I'm a firm believer that th- th- to do it, you've got to develop the guys that you have. And our, that's one one thing that I think our guys really appreciate is that it's like, hey, this is about you guys. Yes, we have to recruit. Yes, we have to bring guys in. But 
we didn't just bring you in for nothing to forget about you. We right. want to develop you. We want you to be able to to control this thing because you've seen the work that's been put into it. And if you hold, if if I've got two guys holding on 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 a rope. When one guy kind of knows the outcome of holding on and the other one doesn't, I think the ones who knows the outcome going to try to hold on a little longer. Yeah, I, you definitely. I mean, you know, I, you see it this year, going back to your point about with the new additions, mm -hmm. um, you have, have some players that came in for just one season. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they, they kind of saw that this is how we do things. Oh, yeah. This is – this is how we get to this level. They bought in. Yes, they did. And they, I could see a difference from day one to the end of the season yes. from those people. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really tremendous just because it, it, there's, there's proof there that they are better, not just football players, but people in general mm -hmm. from buying into something like that. Oh, in yeah. a day and age where you see players up and leave schools, professional teams okay. like right and left mm -hmm. year in and year out like loyalty is a word that you don't even you could probably just scoff at i mean yeah. to to say the least because there's so many other things controlling bigger college football yeah. but at the nai level um you know it's so much about you know growing those guys to that's the true. point that they are juniors and seniors yeah, yeah. and that's when you have that success yeah. now you know <laughs> There's you know, teams out there that try to throw together like an all-star type team. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And I mean, that some people latch onto that, some people don't. Yeah. It depends on what your identity is. I feel like, you know, a lot of times, um, you know, and you know, people can do that if they want to. And if you, if that makes you better, if you don't see like egos clashing, then I mean, do that if it's to your benefit. Yeah, for sure. Well, you know, with that whole loyalty thing, man, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't ask our guys to to just be loyal with nothing in return. You know what I mean? I think I think uh, uh, blind loyalty is worse than leaving. You know what I mean? Like if you if you commit to something, I mean, think about it. We got kids who are investing to be here. You know what I mean? And and that, like other schools, like they're investing to be there, and they should. They should get what they sign up for. And I'm not talking about playing time, but, uh, you know, we want to make sure we're treating our guys right. We want to make sure we're taking care of these guys. We want to make sure we're pushing them academically to be better people, to be better athletes. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a give take. So, yes, we appreciate the loyalty to, to us, but we've got to be loyal to them and loyal to the words that we uh, – exchange with these these young men uh, because man if, if they're not getting if, we, if we're bringing guys in here and we're not treating them the way that we we said that we should treat them uh, then then they should leave now if it's because of playing time or whatever the case may be no that's that's terrible right mm -hmm. that's terrible but um, it, it, it's too big a deal man it's too big a deal like athletics in general it's funny I was having a conversation with somebody today and they said to me, talking about this football coach and stuff, they said, well, I know it's a business. And instantly I said, well, not to me. Not to me, man. Like, mm -hmm. this, is, this is your, this is young, young people's lives, man. Young people's right. lives. Like, a business is selling street tacos. That's a business, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? This yeah. right here, you're literally telling, we're telling parents, send your 18, I'm passionate about this because I'm about to send the son off to college. You know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. And the people are sending their 18 and 19 year old kids to colleges and expecting them to be taken care of and, and expecting them to be told the right things and do the right things. And it's not a business. If right. it is, it's a people business which should be handled very delicately. You know what I mean? Sure. So, but to me, man, it's it, it's not. It's not a business. This is this is real life. Uh, it's a relationship. It's not a business. You know what I mean? It's real life, and and I just wanna. I, I hope our guys understand that. So we'll never treat it like like just a business and. You know, bring a guy in, send a guy out, or and that goes all. All that to say is that the whole loyalty thing, like we, it's a two-way street. 
that loyalty. Yeah, I mean, just because you who you can't be. I mean, I don't think it's wise to be someone different than you are in at a personal level than in a business level. I mean, yes, yes I mean, you kind of have to confine some of your emotions and things like that mm -hmm. to some degree. But there, there's that, that value system that you cannot abandon. Right. And I know, we're, I know we're getting really philosophical here. That's fine. This is the last show. It's, it's, it's either this or you guys hear me complain about us not getting in the playoffs for 50 minutes. So. <laughs> We've done that already. <laughs> but, you know, it just comes down to, you know, um, ethically speaking. Um, yeah, it's just who's who's preparing the young men that's in their program. Yeah the best yep. and you know yes you want to win games and have fun mm -hmm. absolutely that's why you're here like, and, and it's a byproduct man yes it's a byproduct it like, is. I'm not saying you win every game but you you can you can win with culture you can win with culture to me that in what comes to mind is like thinking about unwavering faith mm -hmm. like yeah, I mean a lot of times faith is not by walking by what you can see mm -hmm. like what's right in front of you i know that's that's the thing we all deal with yeah but um but yeah i feel like you know because who knows who knows what the rest of your term at, as head coach at bethel was, was going to look like oh I but know. right <laughs> right because <laughs> it's a it's a byproduct man i keep saying it it's a byproduct we'll right just, we'll just wait we'll have to wait until next next november december to see so. uh, yeah but what i'm just saying is like you're not worried about that no no and part of the reason is because of the whole it's it's literally a by, it's a byproduct like and and not not necessarily winning but success as a whole is a it's a byproduct it's not a destination you do the right things um good things are gonna i i wholeheartedly believe that if you do consistently do the right things the good is gonna find you man it's deja vu i feel like i said the same thing to you last <laughs> november sitting on this couch or yeah. december whenever it was but if you do the right thing uh good things are gonna find you you know what i mean consistently and that's uh, that that's what you know I I've learned that wholeheartedly uh, during my tenure at Lincoln Christian uh, under Jerry Ricky shout out they're still in the playoffs too by the way they probably go get they're gonna get it done this year Lincoln Christian you know and uh, uh, I'm, I'm I'm super happy I saw them last week but I learned that wholeheartedly that just do the right thing do do right by your family right do right by your the, the institution that you work for you know and the people that you're involved with and do right by the the young men that you coach do right by them you know and good things are going to find you there are going to be some hard times you right. know but if you consistently do that i, I believe good good things are going to find you so and i can just tell you folks like you know who you were when we sat on this couch a year ago and who you are now is yeah, there's some diff some difference, but I'm gonna say value system wise, like personal, like beliefs is the same person. Like this, none of the things that happened, whether dramatic or not, or emotional success, you know, any of all that, it doesn't it doesn't waver you. Like just because, um, you know, there's, I mean, if, if you get worked up about, you know, football. Mm -hmm. Like yeah, it's easy to get emotional about it. We, we've even talked. We've been that way. Oh, yeah. We've yeah, been that sure. way. But what I'm saying is just like you just kind of have to let it go and yeah. move on. Move on. <laughs> yeah. That's like it. there's That's it. there's it's been so it's been interesting going back through this season, um, just evaluating all the different things to uh, in our final moments. Um, you know, you guys, you, you had that scrimmage game yep. <laughs> against Atlantis yep. and you didn't know what to expect no. maybe maybe a little bit of a slow start yeah yeah and then you know the touchdowns you do get I mean weren't the prettiest we'll be honest yeah, yeah. but then you go and play McPherson what were we down 13 nothing at half 13 zero at half come back and win mm -hmm. by one by one <laughs> 14 to 13 <laughs> and went down to the wire mm -hmm. then 
you know, the next game, we all know very well, mm -hmm. very emotional game. It is, the players were, you know, it was a tough game. They, I, I know people were nervous. Oh, flat out. yeah, yeah, for sure. And yeah, and everything that happened within that next three days was interesting as well. We'll leave it at that. Mm -hmm. um, Down in that game. Yeah. Won, won that one 26 to 14. Then you go to Kansas Wesley and. Was it 26, 14, or 28? I believe it's 26. Okay. Yeah. Um, and you go to Kansas Wesley and, and, you know, so many people can say, compare, you know, the success of scores. 2016. 2016, is yeah. that what it was? Yeah, that was going to bother me. I'm sorry, Dan. It's all right. You know? <laughs> 2016. Yeah, it's been a long they, season. <laughs> yeah, yeah, 2016. All right, go ahead. But then Kansas Wesleyan, you know, who just was just pounding people, yes. their defense. Hadn't given up a point. Yeah. And you guys get the victory there. It was 31 to 24, I believe. Yeah. And all the weather that you guys dealt with, yeah. that, that we, de we dealt with, I was there. Yes. <laughs> Everything from a flooded locker room to a busted pipe. Looking back on it, man, that was an awesome experience. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, it, it's a crazy experience, but it's one of those things like, you know, we man, we lived through that thing. Man. Yeah. <laughs> so. yeah, we certainly did. Oh, man. Yeah. yeah. But getting the victory there, going three and zero, and then you know just coming back, and you, I believe we hosted Ottawa, mm -hmm. and you guys win that game, and you yeah. start really to turn things around. It was it wasn't pretty with those two defensive touchdowns no. they had no, 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 whatsoever. No. Um, but you feel like you're you're trying you're starting to turn things around mm -hmm. at that point, and um, I'm trying to remember who's Bethany. Bethany was next. Well, that was we a weird one because it was 14-7 at half. Yeah, and I, I can tell you this. There was a lot of guys in the Beth locker room that were not happy. Yes. Mm -hmm. And people that were outside the locker room that were not happy. Yeah, no. no, no. It, it, was, it, was, uh, <laughs> it was one of those intense moments, those, yes. you know, talk about emotions going up and down. Mm -hmm. And then you play Southwestern, mm -hmm. fall festival football game. Um, the guys – knew what they had to do yes yes people can say that southwestern was banged up and they weren't at their fully best people could say that but it doesn't matter like it, it matters what the game result was yeah yeah 31 to 23 yep would have been 31 to 20 that they made that field goal there I know. towards the end there and then you guys had that one you could turn around play avila mm -hmm. at avila and we know how that game went that was a rough game yeah 14-7, and they started taking some momentum you know, there late in the second quarter. People could say we weren't quarter. in our full strength. We lost sure. one of our best blockers that game. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean. That's what it is. But they got the win, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, I mean, it's tough to go up there. It is. You get up early. You play an afternoon game. Yep. They don't have lights. Nope, nope. You're not going to play an evening game up there. And 28-14, uh, to 14, drop that one. Um Went from ninth to sixteenth, I think, in the polls. Seventeenth. Seventeenth. Mm -hmm. Okay, there you go. And then, you know, you know what you need to do the rest of the way because you know what you can't do. Yep. <laughs> and subsequent victories, I believe, over Sterling and Tabor, Tabor and St. Mary to end it. Mm -hmm. nine and one. Yep. And I mean, there's so many things that happened, and some of the things with the victories. They just fly by, they just flash by in your head because mm -hmm. it happened so fast. Time went by so fast this mm -hmm. season. It did, it did. And it, one thing that I've learned here, this has been my fourth season covering, is just to enjoy it. Yeah. That we did. It was a really fun season. I mean, that's the thing. Like, I, man, I enjoy these coaches and, you know, these guys so much. You, Dan, and, you know, talking with uh, – Coach Hoops, Tony Hoops, and you know, just man, it's it it it, it was an awesome season. And again, I just I I, I, I say this, and you know, I, I'm not a guy. I just feel like I feel like we were robbed, man. And I say that loosely, right? Sure. Because I don't want to, you know, I don't want to incite anything or anything, you know, provoke anything like mm -hmm. that. I just I'm just saying, me personally, that's just the feeling, like man, like like. I should have, we should have something, but we don't. You I want more. Just, I want more, yeah. And, and I tell people, I'm not the, I'm not a crybaby. I, I, I've only literally probably said that term 
I've been robbed like three times in my life. This is one of them. And the other time, I had a pair of shoes taken off my feet. So I was actually robbed. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's a true story. Uh, at gunpoint, it, right. it's horrifying. But yeah. I was in seventh grade, by the way. But in all fairness, my mom told me don't wear the shoes outside. So, which in, in my defense, if I can't wear them outside, mom, where am I going to wear them? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Strutting around the house in my but anyway, yeah. there's some Jordans. I'm sorry, yeah. man. I love it's going okay. on tangents. I, love, I know you. I love it. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Go Somebody ahead. come ask Coach Stokes more about that story in the offseason. Yeah, go ahead. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, yeah, I mean, just um, you could definitely be grateful, thankful yeah, this time of year very for thankful. very thankful the things that have happened, the thankful for players that play the whole season were healthy. Yes. Maybe not 100%, mm -hmm. but gave everything they had, mm -hmm. went out. Um, maybe they're a little unsatisfied, but some of them, you know, they gave everything they had to something bigger than themselves. And with that bread was the type of individual that anybody in the workforce would want. Absolutely. Yes. And these guys, I, I know that for a fact. I was telling uh, uh, actual recruits family today that these young men who are, who are leaving here, I, I am very confident that they are going to leave better. 100%. And I know that, and people can say, oh, you can, you can say that just because you're on the show right now. I have a relationship with many of these guys, like one-on-one, -on -one, because my first year was their first year in a lot of, a lot of inst instances. And so I, if you won't go back and watch the senior day broadcast against St. Mary, like I could tell you a short story about everybody that was named there about their growth, about them putting others first for themselves. And that's why the program is where it is. Well, I mean, you said it. You said it all, man. So, and I'm thankful for that. So. Well, for Coach Stokes, I think we're going to wrap things up here on our final show. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Um, for those parents that have graduating seniors, it's been a pleasure to, you know, be a part of this moment in their lives and hopefully they'll never forget it. So for Coach A.B. Stokes, I'm Dan Page for a final time. Roll on.